Hello, my name is Ray Franklin. I'm the Senior Commodity Analyst for Energy Professionals. Today I'm going to do a video summarizing my February 19th energy update, in which I'm going to explain why natural gas prices have declined below $2, but why prices are expected to be much higher by the end of the year. To understand why, I'm going to begin by referring to our February 5th energy update, in which we recommended taking advantage of the short-term decline caused by the January thaw in conjunction with Freeport LNG temporarily closing one of their liquefaction units and reserve energy to be available when your present agreements expired. But after writing our February 5th energy update, all major weather models unexpectedly extended their forecast of milder than normal weather through the end of February, which is expected to increase the already higher than normal total supplies on February the 5th by more than 100 billion cubic feet by March the 8th. Total natural gas supplies are now projected to be 2,260 billion cubic feet by March the 8th, which, is, which would be approximately 34% above the five-year moving average. The unexpected increase of supplies and storage push prices below long-term support near $2. Prices breaking below that long-term support due to total supplies projected to be 2,260 billion cubic feet by March the 8th was unexpected. The question is, based on what happened in the past, will prices remain near today's very low prices for an extended period of time, or are they expected to move higher this year? We will answer this question by presenting you with historical data, and trusted data will guide your decision making. To do so, our goal is to research whether there was historical instances in which supplies were as high as today and analyze natural gas's response long term to those high supply levels. We reviewed data from the Energy Information Administration's website and discovered in 2012 and 2016 the total supplies of natural gas were higher than where they were estimated to be this year on March the 8th. The dates were based on weekly storage reports taken from the previous Friday's close and those dates didn't fall precisely on March the 8th, but were close to that date. As we pointed out earlier, our total supplies are projected to be approximately 2,260 billion cubic feet by March the 8th. But as you can see in the next two charts, on March the 9th, 2012, we had 2,369 billion cubic feet in storage. And on March the 11th, 2016, we had 2,478 a billion cubic feet in storage. And in both cases, natural gas prices were much higher by the end of the year. In 2012, the mild and the normal weather continued until the end of March, and prices declined into the middle of April before reaching their final low at $1.91. In 2016, the final low was $1.61, and this was reached in early March. And in both cases, natural gas more than doubled, approaching $4 by the end of the year. The question is, after reaching lows close to this time of the year with total supplies higher than where we are today, why did prices more than double by the end of the year? In both 2012 and 2016, we experienced warmer than normal winters, resulting in supplies reaching record levels. The prices continued higher into the end of the year simply because prices were unsustainably low. Prices are unsustainably low when they drop below the cost of production. It should also be noted that the longer prices stay low, the higher prices will go later. This is a byproduct of the weaker companies being forced out of business, thereby decreasing competition. And the surviving companies are highly motivated to increase prices to make up for lost profits accrued while prices were low. The takeaway from this analysis is as we approach the lowest price since 2000, the conditions supporting a major bottom in natural gas are in place. And although prices could go slightly lower in the near term, the average price of natural gas will likely be significantly higher by the end of the year. Therefore, if your present energy agreements expire in 2024 or 2025, we recommend you take advantage of this latest short-term decline caused by this year's warmer than normal winter in conjunction with Freeport LNG's temporarily closing one of their liquefaction plants, and reserve energy to be available when your present agreements expire. We believe the average price will be higher long term, 
and the upside risk is far greater than the downside reward potential of waiting, hoping for slightly lower prices. We realize not every client's risk, tolerance, and hedging strategy are the same, but hopefully today's report helps you put into perspective your risk-reward opportunities. And we do invite you to call one of our energy analysts to plan a hedging strategy that would be appropriate for your situation. And until my next report, please take care.